Hello everybody and welcome to the very first holiday special for the animals of the Pennsylvania Woods of Vivariums. In today's video we're going to be comparing the gray tree frogs to the white tree frogs. I'll be needing your help to decide three categories. Who's the better hunter? Who has the most informative and educational enclosure? And who has the best vivarium? You can also select who you think the MVP is, the single most important frog to this video. Please comment below and let me know who you choose for the three categories and for your MVP. Starting off the video, I wanted to make sure that I showed one of the upcoming parts of the new Pennsylvania Woods Vivarium with the gray tree frogs. These are the baby gray tree frogs that were given to me by some relatives. I wanted to show them because they're going to be a part of this video potentially next year depending on how many of these guys survive. I'm really excited to see what will happen whenever these babies grow up and eventually meet Bane and Christian. I'm just so excited to figure out how this encounter will go between the adults, Christian and Bane, and whenever they meet the babies for the first time. I'll make sure to document that in an upcoming video. Now getting into the video itself, here is Christian and you've already seen Bane. These are the two adult gray tree frogs that we're going to be talking about and comparing to the white tree frogs. Here we can see them with their accessory and what they're going to look like in close combat. Starting off for the close combat part of this is Christian. He's the younger male gray tree frog. And here we get a chance to see how aggressive and how ferocious he can be whenever prey is right in front of his face. This is one thing that's very important when we're deciding who the better hunter is, how precise they can be up front and close and personal. And this is the perfect clip here to show you how Christian responds and how he represents the great tree frogs as a species. They're very fast and they're very energetic. Let's take another look at this in slow motion and show just how incredible of a catch this truly is. These great tree frogs, among with all the other amphibians, are just so lightning quick with their tongues. They don't give any insect or any prey item for that matter the opportunity to react. And here we get to see Christian, just how aggressive and ferocious he truly is and how he's unafraid to come to the front of the enclosure and let everybody else see the kind of a close combat competitor he is. Next we have to talk about stealth. Whoever the best hunter is would have to have some stealth you'd think. And whenever stealth is in the question or even in the conversation, Bane has to come up as the top name. Bane is the most stealthiest frog that I've ever had the opportunity to watch hunt. You're going to see some really amazing clips of Bane. Some that you're going to be surprised about and some that will leave you in awe. But Bane is truly the leader of this enclosure. He is from top to bottom the stronger, faster, and most dominant and even aggressive gray tree frogs that I've ever seen in captivity. And here we actually have an example of what I'm talking about specifically. So here on the left side of the screen, we see Christian making his way to the right hand side, attempting to go after a cricket and doing it stealthily. Here, Bane just comes out of nowhere, unprovoked, for no apparent reason, and lunges at Christian. Now some people might think that this might just be because Bane had seen a feeder insect in front of Christian, however that's not the case. Bane did this on purpose to send a message and he wanted Christian to know that that was not okay to go after the feeder insect. This was his enclosure and he was going to make sure that Christian understood that. I had no idea that Bane would show this type of behavior towards Christian. It really took me by surprise. But moving forward, Christian decided to shake it off and he went after another cricket. He's not even really looking at this cricket. In slow motion you can see here he was just focused on the movement and one of the really cool things about frogs is they have vision much better than people they could see in front of them beside them a little bit up from them and behind them so Christian shows this perfectly and we get another shot at seeing Bane keeping his eye on Christian while they're both going after banded crickets this enclosure truly is owned by Bane not only do you see how aggressive he is towards Christian which potentially could be a problem if 
let's say the babies come in and Bain makes sure that they know exactly where he stands. But also, Bain just has so much strength and ability to just do things that would make you say, wow. And this is another one of those moments. Here we get a shot at seeing Bain so quiet and so stealthy that the crickets that are climbing up, they're trying to escape the gray tree frogs. They know there's danger, but they had no idea that they were being watched by Bane. His nickname is The Hunter, and the reason why is because he's just so darn good at it. He can do it in so many different ways. I've actually seen Bane have to strategize catching crickets from a larger plant and pick them off one by one without the crickets even knowing that they were disappearing every so often. Bane is just so resilient and he just makes sure that he follows through his strategy. At least for this part of the video, I'd have to give the advantage to the gray tree frogs as the better hunter. The reason being because of Bane. I'm not sure if all gray tree frogs are exactly like him when they hunt. I know Christian has differences, but I know that Bane is just so stealthy and he's also so agile, it would just be a really disappointing thing to take it away from Bane, seeing how incredible he is at hunting. He would almost make a National Geographic documentary of his style of hunting. They would be able to get such incredible shots. I truly would encourage anybody to watch Great Tree Frogs hunt. It's just amazing. And here we have a shot at seeing their intelligence. This is Christian, the younger Great Tree Frog. Now he's one of my favorites of all time just because he learned how to eat from this bowl as well as hand feeding from wax worms to crickets to other feeder insects. He just sits there and he's so confident and comfortable he allows me to just put him right in front of his face and he takes it without even hesitating. That's one of the best parts about Christian is that if I need to change the enclosure or I need to get him away from whatever spot in the enclosure. I can literally put my hand out and he'll just rest on me and he'll trust me to send him back inside the enclosure. But for intelligence wise, Christian gets very spoiled because he understands about taking food from me whereas Bane, Bane is more of a hunter and he wants to earn it instead of having to get handouts. Very rarely have I seen Bane come to the ground to feed from the bull but I have in some cases, so they both have this ability. Moving on to the next category I would like for you to vote. This is for the best vivaria, meaning the plants and the ecosystem. Here is a hydrorange plant and you can see a baby banded cricket hanging out on the leaves. This plant has gone through so many transformations in captivity. It looks like there's a lot of dead leaves, but you can also see buds that are coming up. And what this means is that it's actually starting to grow and thrive in this enclosure. Next, you can see in the water bin, there's English ivy, and this, my friends, is one of the most incredible plants because it's drought resistant, it lives in water, and it's almost impossible to kill. And their bark accessory, which also could be looked at as driftwood. This is one of the favorite places the tree frogs like to sleep, play, hide, and hunt stuff. It's all covered under a T5 light source that might get placed a little bit differently in a different enclosure, but for now they have a T5 light source. Moving forward, I want to introduce their competitors, the Dumpy family, my white's tree frogs. Here is Spurgeon and Jeremiah, the two boys of the Dumpy family. Jeremiah is actually a little bit more shy than what Spurgeon is, so he takes off as soon as he sees the camera. Starting us off for close combat, here's my oldest animal, Max, my four-year-old female white tree frog. She just like Christian enjoys eating from a bowl, but the problem is she was very hungry for the butterworms, but whenever the camera came out she actually got a little bit shy and refused to eat. She just continued looking at me, it almost was like she was asking me, what are you doing filming me? I used to only use my phone. So this is a whole different type of an experience for my animals as well. They get to see this big Nikon camera instead of a phone, which is probably a little bit more intimidating. Here we have another shot at her just looking at me and saying, what are you doing? 
She just continued to be curious and I think it actually started to get her a little bit stressed out. I was very surprised to see her so shy and nervous about this camera. She's usually been very good about being filmed as she's starred in every video for the White's Tree Frogs on my channel. So this was a little bit different for me seeing her react this way. And she just had enough, so she decided to take off and she wasn't going to come back out until I stopped filming. So I respected her and the next day attempted to give her another insect for close combat. Here is a European house cricket, one of the best things to feed a white's tree frog. It's dusted with supplements and she willingly took it. This was one of the better experiences that I had with her as she went after the insect and not me. In this next clip, you're going to have the opportunity to see her go after not just her feeder insect, but also my finger. So here is a butterworm that I got out of her bowl, but because I went in her bowl, Max is a little bit frustrated with me. So she decided to take it out on my finger, and she was having a go at me because I was recording her again. Here is a shot of Spurgeon, who's also hunting a European house cricket. This is one of the different strategies that the white's tree frog has compared to the gray tree frog. There's no camouflage, there's nothing to hide them, they're both on the background. The cricket has full exposure to the tree frog and vice versa. But here we get an opportunity to see Spurgeon just does not care. He doesn't need camouflage. His sheer size and his ability to deliver a final strike, an end blow, is truly what does it for these white's tree frogs right there and you get a chance to see how he grabs it in slow motion and he puts it in his mouth with his right leg which is really incredible to see in slow motion how fast he reacted even with his arm the dumpy family do not care about the same things the great tree frogs do for instance their sheer size and strength allows them to overpower most feeders that they're trying to consume Whereas the great tree frogs have to be more stealthy and they have to rely on being a better hunter just to catch prey. They have to surprise their prey instead of doing an ambush strike. If the white's tree frogs happen to be blended in with their surroundings, then so be it. But they're not as worried quite like what the great tree frogs are. In this next shot, we get a chance to see how nosy both of these tree frogs are. Max is still fired up about the camera being in her face and Spurgeon continues to watch his brother Jeremiah down there hunting crickets while he's up at the top. Curiosity may have killed the cat but it has nothing on the white's tree frog because these are truly nosy frogs but I don't mean that in a bad way. It's actually really humorous watching them to be so nosy even with each other. Here we have a really good shot at another close combat action. Here, Spurgeon just lunges and goes after the other house cricket. There it is in slow motion. You could see he's not blended in and the cricket could have seen him, but it was just something that was not going to be avoided. It was either get attacked by the tree frog or fall down into the water where there's probably another one waiting for you. Max just looks so incredible. Just the leap that she took from the side of the enclosure right onto a plant. She's a little bit heavier than the others, but she's also very skillful when she's maneuvering around the enclosure. And that's really impressive for the third largest species of tree frog in the world. That's right, the white's tree frog is the third largest species. The other two tree frogs in order that are a little bit bigger than the dumpy tree frogs. First is the Cuban tree frog. Next is actually a relative of the white tree frog. It's the white-lipped tree frog. They both are from Australia, the first and the third largest. And here is just some extra aggression that the white tree frogs show, especially Max, as she just had enough of me filming her and she had to make sure that she let me know how she felt. And after she let me know, she turned back to see her work and she looked like she was really sassy, like she just accomplished exactly what she wanted. I have no idea why she would decide to lunge at my camera. She's never done this before, but I can say that she's never been as fired up about me recording her either. Here's the bid for the White's Tree Frogs in their attempt to show you the best vivarium between the two. This is a tropical polydarium with a diff plant which is native to the rainforest, palms, peace lilies, a bonsai tree, and some pothos. They also have some really cool decorations in here. 
This is all met with a T5 Odyssey light and Exoterra compact UVB bulbs. So that way the tree frogs can get calcium and also D3 and the plants can thrive with the T5 light. Here we get a nice shot of all of the plants inside the enclosure, just how tall they stand. And here we get some shots at the decorations. You get a chance to see Max on the jack-o'-lantern, which is one thing that I set up for Halloween. There will also be more decorations to come. The skeleton, however, is going to be permanent. Max was still very upset about me recording her, so even later that night, she decided that she wasn't going to eat. She was still trying to go on strike because I was recording her. And here we see the guest for the Dumpy family, their friend who lives in the water, a betta fish that's a male named Finn. Finn's been in a couple videos and he's been very quiet about his business. He's a very happy betta fish. He also enjoys eating the roots, possibly dead insects that are laying just at the surface of the water and he also eats his betta food. A really interesting fact about the betta fish is mainly they're from Malaysia and from Vietnam. This is very close to the area that the white's tree frog originated from which is Indonesia. So they're very compatible in terms of weather and climate. The betta fish and the paludarium bottom part of this enclosure as well as the night light LED function from the Odyssey T5 light fixture are included in the bid for the best vivarium part of this battle. Thank you guys for watching my battle here between the white tree frogs and gray tree frogs. Please let me know who you vote for. If you like this, please subscribe and share it with your friends and get them involved in the conversation. And happy Thanksgiving everybody.